Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man, Hello. Stevens, and Ryan Preston decided to take his ball and go home. He will not be on this episode. Uh, so one of the things we want to talk about, we're going to do a little old school talk about a short I found called FTL on YouTube, Faster Than Light, basically... By Dust. <laughs> dust, yeah. They actually have quite a number of shorts on that channel. I've watched a couple. Um, this one was cool. Basically, it's about Earth's first attempt at faster than light travel to Mars. Um, it revolves around the main character, who's the gentleman flying. I don't remember the character's name. And uh, revolving, it, like 10, it's like 10, 15 minutes, a little bit about his backstory. It has, it, it's it's actually, yeah, it's that's like pretty a much it. minute episode. Um, yeah, I gotta say, I was actually very impressed with the cinematography and the graphics. There was the the it was the, very clean. The only thing that I just didn't like, and it seemed very sci-fi channel-ish, and by itself, by the way, calling it sci-fi channel-ish on a short is not necessarily a bad thing. But the things at the end, those little crystal shard ships. Oh yeah, that was the only thing that kind of bugged me because I didn't like the way those looked. But I loved the ship design with the concentric rings and yeah. Well, the um, thing about the. The little crystal chips or whatever the hell they were. Um, those only looked really bad when they were transporting them back on Earth. This is true. When they were superimposed they were space, over the light. Yeah. yeah. In space, they looked cool. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But superimposed, they, were, they looked bad. Um, there was a lot of superimposed shit. Because even when they, um, I guess, uh, reconstituted him, mm-hmm. that was actually a... That whole sequence there was a little bit off, and they may have reasons. Maybe their budget was running a little low, or they just didn't have the tools to make it look as clean as it could have been, like the rest of it, where they were I'll, when he was out in space. Versus I'll give you that. When, he, when they were in, um, that was the only part that didn't look right. I don't know if they were supposed to be in the the air, you know, the out in Florida, the um, Houston, <laughs> you know, out there, which. I don't know why they always call it Houston. Anyways, but anyways, I, I don't know. Canaveral? Yeah, I don't know why they... Um, that was the only everything part... Everything looked nice except for that section. Yeah, and I think that's a problem with shorts in general because usually a lot of the shorts that we reviewed doing Real Flicks reviews, they all had that same issue being super overimposed over the background. Like, especially yeah. if you, specifically on Earth, and you could name it, uh, whether it's a bright sunny day at noon, you're talking about dusk or... Or, you know, when the sun rises, they all have some issues revolving that. Every short we've had well, that has had the, that particular yeah. issue. Um, now, I don't know if they did old school where they actually built a set for him to be sitting in the ship or whatever, but that was a pretty cool thing, that, too. I don't know. See, I'm thinking they partially... Yeah, you know what it is? I bet they partially built it. And then kind of the like green or blue screened after it. Yeah, because I, mean, I think... It's the not contr- as bad as green screen, but, you know... Well, well, the i to say green screen's better than blue screen. Oh, that's right. Just like um, brain today. Green screen's a newer technology. Yeah. Chroma key. With chroma key, you can make anything a green screen. Um, yeah, I because I think what they did is the, the control panel and all that were, were digital. Um, unlike what they used to do in the Star Trek, like the next generation, where they have like a TV or a monitor behind it playing footage. Oh, yeah, that's true. I dug it. I, I, you know, as far as in the real flicks review scale, I'd give it a five out of five for a short film. Only th- actually four to five, because the only thing I didn't like was the last part, and it's just me being picky. If was just the last kind of graphics. Well, I'd say even for a short, I mean, that's uh, I, as far as a short goes. It, that's a really, th- I. I'm curious what their budget was, but whatever it was, the first, I'd say, 12 minutes of the show, of the movie, or short, um, they utilized their budget very nicely. Yeah, you know what? I revised it. I'll give it a 5 out of 5. That was really well done. So, I mean, for, as far as what they did in the last, I'd say, probably was only, like, maybe 90 seconds of the ending, I think. Now, my issue is that There was a lot of questions at the end of it. I don't know if this is one that they are going to continue on. I think they could. I don't know if they were trying to get it as a movie getting picked up by a studio or a network as a television show or whatever. I think there was a lot of questions unanswered at the end. Well, I mean, because that reminds me, wasn't there a short called Skins that was supposed to be getting an actual TV show? 
Uh, no, um, we, we actually I, reviewed the original. Um, probably. I actually kind of like the idea, and this has just been kind of my idea of lately, is uh, the idea of doing, you know, back in the day, like serialized serialized content like you know like 14 minutes and like six months from now they release another 14 i think it'd be cool bring back old school serials they could easily sell ads against it um i think it was something like this or whatever content they could have they could easily find some sort of you know uh, company that wants to have a product well, placement in it my issue <clears throat> with it with them getting picked up as a television show is I hate to say it star trek did it um, humans getting their first uh, FTL drive. Well, first this... FTL drive got alien attention, right? Well, the, I was thinking it this was is... the warp drive in Star Trek. I was thinking this could be more like an Earth Final Conflict type of deal, like the aliens come to Earth. Because this one... It, it, cause... But the premise of the fact that they finally encountered life out in space... Based off of a faster than light speed drive is the same basis of Abram. Well, yeah, but it's also the I same mean, thing. Just, of, it's that's just what I'm putting out there. I'm just saying that is what I take from it. That's I, why I'm saying there's a lot of questions unanswered. Yeah, I could also say it's you know it's the same thing like Mass Effect. I mean, it's it's kind of at this point it's generic. I'll definitely give you Star Trek. You know, it's the first people I thought of. You know, Flash Gordon could have done uh, the same thing. Uh, Savior of the universe. Um, I yeah, I don't know. I liked it. I kind of would. I, I want to see where it goes. I'm gonna have to check out that YouTube channel because I think the YouTube channel's called Dust. They have a lot of content on there. Um, at least a lot as I had a chance to take a look at it. You know, like a couple of seconds last night. Um, so that was cool. Um, not a lot to talk about. Their CES is on, and some of the weird things of CES was like this suitcase that uh, has ears. And you can pet the suitcase and the ears do things. I'll Why see if, would you want that? I don't know, but somebody brought up a good point is, um, can you take it on airplanes? Because I'm assuming it's powered by lithium-ion batteries. Oh, probably not. Um, there was another allegedly another suitcase that uh, could follow you around. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. So I just, I don't know. I, I, mean, I still want to... I love, here, this is it. I love CES, though. I want to go back so bad. CES was fun. And it's really cutesy. They come in, it's obviously very, you know, uh, pastel Japanese. colors, very Japanese. Um, generally, I would say these were geared towards young girls. But like the, the graphic on it... Um, I just... <laughs> the graphic on it, I think they're called uh, Frevel? F-R-A-V-E-L. Uh, take a look. They're kind of cute. I mean, if, if you have a young girl, I don't, by the way, don't know how much money these are. I'm assuming they're at least a couple hundred dollars, which is probably a waste of money on a suitcase. We can go to Walmart and pick one up for 80 bucks. Um, but hey, they're cute. I just, I mean, do you have to feed them? <laughs> that's, that's my first question. I, I, I don't know. What do you feed them? The souls of your enemy? Or oh, are those little watch things that you had to feed your animals? I never had one. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. though. Yeah. Now, there's yeah. a lot of those dying today. <laughs> a lot. Well, I, I don't know anybody that kept them alive. They always died. kept, like, restarting. <laughs> Is that what they did? Yeah, because I think after a while they <laughs> died, you could just hit restart button. That's kind of funny. I didn't know that they actually died. Yeah, I just, I, if I remember correctly. I like, I'm not interested. It's kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, know. there just hasn't been a lot of news. I mean... No, there's really not been a lot of inter interesting stuff. I mean, other than if we want to get into the Trump bullshit. Which, I would I would rather... And I, I like to say that the Trump bullshit because there's a lot of it that goes on both sides. So that's the only as far thing, as I want to say on it. The only thing I'm, I'm, I'll say on the Trump thing, especially with the border wall, is it's finally coming to a head because both sides of the people, um, both sides of the aisle have talked about politics. Um, actually... Uh, was it Nancy and Chuck Schumer actually voted for a wall? Bill Clinton did a wall. So I'm politically, I'm curious on on what's going to happen, just because it's it's better. Usually, politics wise, it's better to kick things uh, you know down the road a bit. That's that's actually something. By the way, if you ever pay attention to, we'll say they'll do it next session. We're going to kick it down the road a little bit. There's all sorts of words basically meaning that they'll never get to it. Both sides do it. Both sides are guilty. 
at certain key words if you listen to it. And, it's it's uh, political bingo. And John is completely right. I, I had a, and that happens on federal, state, and local, meaning county government does the same shit. Like I've sat in, in meetings in our own county and – and the whole time, it's like the first like hour is them just postponing everything. Can we move this to this day on the calendar? That doesn't quite work for me. Can we do it a little bit later? And even the court systems do the same shit. If you go into a, just a basic uh, um, traffic court versus you know criminal court, the judges will do the same shit with lawyers. Can yeah. we just move it a, like a month later? They, they do that, God, uh, and they even do that financially. It California's famous for doing that, is they'll do uh, political, excuse me, creative accounting, and they'll pass mm. things on the next year. So I, take a look. Off. If you ever why, if you, I don't know if there's anybody out there who's a big fan of uh, United C-span. States politics. <laughs> um, it's political bingo. It's the only way I pay attention to... Uh, to politics is by watching for stuff like that. You know, keywords. Trump will, will usually make fun of somebody. Um, you know, Pelosi does this. So watch out for political bingo. It actually makes it a little bit funner, um, especially if you're with somebody. No, I get mad. <laughs> um, God, I've just, had to leave. I've had to leave city council meetings because I get pissed off at that shit. That, I've been looking like all day for interesting stories, and there's there really isn't much. Yeah, there's nothing that stuck out on me. I, um, I even haven't months. had a chance to play Red Dead. The only thing I've been doing lately is um, looking up, uh, was it mixology recipes, like the old-fashioned. It's a whiskey or bourbon drink. Um, it's pretty funny, too, because there's like a thousand different recipes I found, and nobody's like, some claim to be original. Um, I'm <laughs> looking we'll forward agree. to... F- yeah, usually it's a very simple one, but I found like super complicated ones. It's like, Wow. I guarantee you nobody will ever agree on it. It's the same thing with, as I've said earlier with the recipes. You're, cooking recipes, you're never going to find one that is identical to somebody else's. I will say something. Now this reminds me, um, a voice of a generation has passed away over the last couple of weeks. It's something that we didn't talk about last week that I wanted to. Um, Ryan may know it. He was the voice of my childhood. Um Mean Gene Okerlund had recently passed away. <clears throat> um, mean Gene Okerlund was probably one of the most famous wrestling voices in history. Um, interviewed some of the greats, Hulk Hogan. Um, geez, Mr. Perfect. He was in was WCW. He just an announcer, or was he a wrestler he was, at some point? No, he well, he was an interviewer. He did announcing. Usually, he was the guy in the back interviewing people. Um, look him up, okay. Mean Gene Okerlund. Um, legitimately made me sad uh hulk hogan uh was one of his famous people he interviewed there's actually a a scene where hulk hogan had to get him ready for a wrestling match so hulk hogan drank like four you know like four raw eggs tried to get mean gene to do it check it out uh, i i i'm really the raw sad about egg that thing is just i it's just a gross thing i mean <laughs> i almost gagged watching it you know i think i was drinking i mean something. it's not something that's really necessarily going to kill you i mean most things are been processed enough these days but even it's the still texture yeah that, that's where i'm at and it's, I, i'm not even sure if that would actually I don't, I don't see how that would give you any protein the course, yolk but you can cook it and get the same protein can't you you can it's just quicker <laughs> oh. it's like drinking snot i'm but sorry then all of a sudden you, i mean you also add in you know different types of fats because you cook eggs in fat so i mean it, you're getting protein <clears> and other <throat> stuff from the butter and olive oil or whatever you use yeah but i mean if you want something that's got less fat in it you might as well do it raw if you want to it's like drinking snot dude there's, there's, i wonder I if the raw food people do that there's some oh. chicken eat it raw um have you heard of and i'm gonna get this wrong i think it's called raw water or natural water so these these <laughs> these people will take like spring water freight straight from the stream and bottle it no processing no cooking how no is that bleaching. even legal <laughs> how does it get past the FDA approval? I don't know how it does, but people sell it and they've been getting sick off of it, which I think is funny. Oh, I could have told you that. Um, <laughs> now, the, the so Penn & Teller's bullshit show, you know, the old HBO show, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they did one about the bottled water companies. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so what they did was they they set up a fake restaurant and they were 
one of the special things they were doing in the restaurant is they were going around and telling people that this water is from an artesian well out in in godforsaken butthole nowhere. They didn't use those terminology, but close enough. And what they were doing in the back is they would take each pitcher and they would fill it up from the hose. They actually hooked up a hose to the water and were dumping in the pitchers and then asking people what they thought about it. And all these people were giving them the, it's like, oh, this one, you can taste this in it and all this other shit. And that's what I thought was hilarious because that's kind of what the same with uh, Pepsi and Cola. They're the companies that do a lot of the waters that you're going to find at, at gas stations, all the bottled water things. They don't really do the same shit either because it's not as regulated as soda. The soda old, soda is more regulated than the bottled water companies. The old guy has a story about being in Mexico for a band, oh band trip down in high school or something like that, looking out the window. And these, these, uh, these Mexican guys are filling up uh, water bottles with a tap, with oh, yeah. the hose. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so oh, and the other thing I was going to uh, bring up is oh, that there was an old TED Talk. Look up what uh, it's called, Raw Water. Look it up. I was right. So there's a TED Talk about this guy. I forget the the product he was promoting but he found a, a little he created a device that purifies water it was like a like a, the sippy straw uh not quite it's like a pump device hmm. that you can take basically completely contaminated water wow and filter it through this device and have it come out as clean as you can get it. And it's a very it's a very interesting TED Talk. And what he was trying to do was promote it to get delivered to people in Africa and the third world countries that have problems with getting clean water. And so he comes out and he brings out... The, this is the really cool part. Is he brings out this uh, fish tank. And he basically dumped everything you could think of. I mean, even like fecal matter and piss into this fish tank. Why did scoops it up in his device. San Francisco. Uh, basically, same thing. Sp scoops it up in this device and then purifies it and shows everybody. And he's even got all the little testing strips and everything and then drinks it right there in front of everybody. And I, I think it's a very cool device, but it's not something that you hear about very often. I mean, I only heard it on the <clears throat> TED Talk. Reminds me of Bill Gates releasing a bunch of mosquitoes during one of those talks. Yeah. Um, actually, <laughs> I'd, uh, this actually has something to do with wrestling, believe it or not. There's a gentleman by the name of Eric Bischoff. Um, he was the president of World Championship Wrestling. He's been on WWE. He did a TED Talk. Um which was one of the coolest TED Talks I've ever seen. Hmm. He actually started out cutting a, a heel promo on people. <laughs> and it was talking about how news media... Does the same is shit. a lot like wrestling. Um, check it out. Uh, just type in Eric Bischoff TED Talk. I promise you it's worth it if you've never thought about this. Because basically it says that with, with wrestling, it's, it's about stopping... You, not getting you to think, but emotion. Getting you to react. Yeah. Um, Literally the one of the best TED talks I've ever heard, I've ever seen, just because it was pointing out that a lot of the old wrestling tricks everybody's using. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they've been using it for decades. Well, um, that, I, well, I mean, I get what you're saying as far as media and or well, like news, news media news specifically has been using it. I'd say you know, I, Couple the last decades. ten years maybe specifically that I've been paying attention to. I didn't know Eric Bischoff did a TED talk. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, it, if you guys don't know what TED Talks is, just go out to just Google it. I mean, come on. Some of them are an idiot. The only issue I have with TED Talks is they don't have longer ones. Like they're all Oh, like, there are some that are really long. Just, all the ones I've seen that they're only supposed to be a few minutes, but there's a few that are pretty long. I think they're like no longer than 20 minutes. Yeah, they're not supposed to be. But all the ones long. I've like this Eric Bischoff one Granted, I don't think he would have done it if it was a 45-minute talk, but I would have True. loved to have seen his talk um, dialed down more, specifics, evidence, because it was interesting. Hmm. My other favorite TED Talk, and this was years ago, was talking about how you could remote control and take over a car. Like oh, you could yeah. hit the brakes, because everything's drive-by-wire. Same thing yeah. aircrafts are actually controlled by. Um, so if you got somehow able to control it, you could slam on the brakes, cause it to, you know... All sorts of things. It was one of my favorite ones just because these guys actually had videos of them testing it, trying it out, how they did it. Um, it was pretty It was pretty interesting. And this was 
And this is before like Wi-Fi was really built into cars when some of the things that are now in cars were not so much then. Yeah, it's kind of scary the things that you can do now. I mean, you even have remote starts these days and you also have what's the, the keyless entries. Remote starts, I've you know, we've been around for a been while. Around for the the keyless while. entry, I've, I've always found weird. I rented a Nissan uh, Altima for a while. That uh, have, As long as you have the fob on, your, mm-hmm. on you, you can start the car, open the door. Yep. I don't really like that. Um, I mean, it's cool at first, but when you really think about it, it's kind of... The, the one that bothers me the most is uh, everybody's favorite mad inventor, Elon Musk, mm. said something about one of the new features coming out at some point is your car will come get you. So my assumption is what it is. So is the Batmobile. Pretty much. <laughs> so basically, like, you park your car and you go, you know, you go... Here, boy, and it, it, it comes to you type of thing. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of autonomous driving. Um, there is an, uh, there's an anime, uh, X driver. Oh, yeah. That it kind of talks about this stuff like this. And it was an interesting idea. Basically, only selective people are allowed to drive gasoline powered self driving car, uh, non self driving cars. And somehow they're all teenagers. I'm not quite sure about that. Anime. Yeah. But it was interesting. So the, the whole thing of this anime was basically saying that these cars once in a while go rogue. So there's people who drive manual cars, go around... And s- catch them. And catch them. Stop them from killing people. Um, which, oddly enough, it seems like at some point you're going to need non-teenagers. Yeah, see, my thing would be like, why not just get rid of them? What? The gas power? No. The cars that go rogue and start killing people. Well, uh, Why don't you just eliminate it? <coughs> Well, it's this, the Matrix. And this was the story behind it. But I, mean, I know, can, I know. I, I see the it, anime. <laughs> but it makes sense. There could be some sort of glitch or something in the system that caused it to go rogue. You know, like, <clears throat> if your infrastructure or whatever mechanism is actually powering it, <clears throat> you know, whether you're talking about, like, is it individually, like, mainframes built in? Is it, like, some sort of giant computer in the cloud? I, I don't know. I, it was just interesting, and it seems like at some point it's going to come true just because all funky tech is getting these days. Yeah. Oh, oh, the other thing me. is allegedly heard that it's something about thrusters on your vehicle. I, I think at this point in time, Elon Musk is dipping too much into the marijuana, and I'm a giant Elon Musk fan. He's eating the gummy bears. <laughs> I love Elon Musk just because the fact he's one of those guys that he has the money... To do whatever he wants. Yeah, so he's actually trying to come up with solutions, which I love the fact that he's willing to do it. I think it's a little weird sometimes, but hey, more power to you. And holy shit, R. Kelly may get in trouble for some of the creepy crap that everybody knows he does, but somehow he never got arrested for it. Go watch the pee on you video. No. (laughs) It's a hilarious video. Nobody likes golden showers, unless you're R. Kelly. Um... I just think it's crazy. Like, this has been such a weird couple of years. <laughs> like, I'm just wondering when they're going to execute Bill Cosby. Actually, I heard something about this on a podcast I was listening to. They said, the comment was, everybody was denouncing Bill Cosby, but everybody calls Hugh Hefner an amazing, Amer- a great American. Uh, I've never said that. I, I've never heard, I've never said that either, but I think it's a societal thing. I thought that was fascinating. Of course... A, a Me Too movement versus a guy who's showing everybody boobs is not exactly the same I'm thing. Just, uh, who says that about Hugh Hefner? Or was uh, my favorite apologist, Ravi Zacharias, brought it up. Yeah, but I'm just saying, who says Hugh Hefner is an amazing American? Yeah, I've heard people say, oh, Hugh Hefner was a great American. I mean, it, it, it's the idea, the, the ultimate male machismo fantasy that you I got a bunch of naked women around you constantly. Which He was an amazing businessman. How about that? But when your business is, as John said, boobs and, you know, <laughs> naked women, how hard is it to ruin that unless you're government? I mean, Bunny Ranch. Just putting that out there. I mean. Well, I just, I, I thought it was fascinating because I, I don't remember specifically what it was talking about, but that particular line just really struck out at me. I mean, the, the only problem I have with that breaks down is the fact that on some level, Bill Cosby was a complete creepy bastard. Oh, never mind. Hugh Hefner was creepy, too. Um, but everybody volunteered for it when you're, you're talking about Hugh Hefner because women wanted to get in magazines. I don't know. I just, I don't know. 
Um, I mean, I liked the Cosby show. Um, kids say the darnest thing is a, it was a pretty good show until you found out what he was doing in the back. Um, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned on that, it, you just, all it shows about Bill Cosby is how good of an actor he is. I mean, same with, uh, God, why Danny Tanner? Why can't I never remember his actual name anymore? Bob Saget. Thank you, Bob Saget. I mean, a fantastic actor. I I think fantastic actor is stretching. I think he's a mediocre actor at best, especially when you look at Full House, which I mean, it was well, a family again, show. I in haven't the 90s. watched it since the nineties. That's the it's, last time I saw Full House. It's so. a family show in the nineties. As 90s. a kid, I liked it. Um, Kind of. It was okay acting. I mean, it was it, it was a cheesy. I by the way, I still like Full House, but it was a, it was a cheesy family comedy. Yeah, but I preferred to you know Home Improvement, and Step by Step, Step by Step, uh, and um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I mean, those were uh, those were shows I enjoyed more than Full Family House. Matters. Family Matters. But you know, I would say he's an adequate actor. I, I wouldn't say he was a great actor. He fulfilled the role really good. There you go. You could say he's an amazing actor because he's an incredibly dirty comic. Um, he makes sailors blush if you ever watch his comedy special. By the way, watch the first 15 minutes and you'll turn it off right away. Yeah, but as far as dirty comics, I mean, Gilbert Godfrey makes Bob Saget blush. Yeah. Just God, saying. I love, I love, yeah, just saying. I love Gilbert Godfrey. I mean, he's not particularly relevant anymore. But I mean, he is probably the dirtiest Jew ever in show business, and that's well, saying something. Wasn't that his tagline? Was it was. The world's most annoying Jew or dirtiest? Yeah, annoying Jew. Something but, along those yeah, lines. I mean, he's a pretty dirty Jew, too. <laughs> I, I'm not bringing up my joke. I'm not doing that on this show. I, I'm just... I actually haven't watched any of his stand-up in years, but he hasn't. he has a podcast out somewhere. Well, unfortunately, ladies... Gilbert Godfrey? Yeah, he was talking to Kurt Hammett of Metallica. Hmm. Um, right. And it was an interesting, because you don't hear too many interviews with just Kurt Hammett. Usually it's with James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, Ulrich whatever the fuck his name is. Hmm. Um, and Lars has been to one too many therapy sessions, because every time you hear him talk, it sounds like one. <laughs> and I still think he's the most hated musician, even though I actually agree with him at this point in time when it comes to Napster. I don't know his views on Napster. Oh, what what happened is he came out when uh, file sharing really started coming out and people were getting all their music for free. He was one of the reasons Napster shut down. Oh, yes, I know. Yeah, now, Um, now, now, okay. Uh, Sorry, I was thinking of something else. I know what you're talking about. At that point, I disagreed with it because that was uh, Pandora wasn't out. There's a bunch of services that weren't out so I could discover new music. My favorite one of the time was called Audio Galaxy because it broke everything into genres. So I could do like trance, dark beat, all these different sub-genres of music to discover because I loved music. Um, and, and up until Pandora and Spotify and some of the things that have come out with the last decade, there was no way to do that when Napster came out unless you had a ton of money to burn on, you know, to waste on CDs that you'd probably never like. Sure. Um, but, you know, the older I get, it's like, hey, the, the, you know, it's... You know, I understood right away what was going on with uh, <clears throat> Napster and all the other ones, and I could keep going on. There, there were a lot of names of media grab uh, software at that time. Um, but, you know, I understood where the musicians were coming from right away because that's where they were making their money. If they came up with something that makes their living obsolete, basically... Well, they got most of their living. F- they got mo- they got from shows, me, from but, shows which but, not so much anymore. But but you know that, but them having the CD <laughs> rights yeah. and things like that was also part of their income, and they were going to be losing that if Napster and all the other ones kept going. Well, I think the only people who, and I could be wrong, I thought each member got a little bit of royalty rights. The writers of the songs got. Well, I mean that would be a contract on contract basis of what they signed. I mean, I'm sure there was a, just like a basic contract written up at the time, but I mean, you'd have to kind of look at each one and really get a good view of how much income they're going to be losing. And uh, so, yeah, no, it was, it was interesting. Like, well, I didn't really, but I understood it. Well, I didn't, when I was younger, when that happened, I didn't understand it because I was just interesting to discover music. Granted, I never used Napster because I wasn't brave enough and didn't want to get viruses. Um, so, the same reason I never really used LimeWire either. 
I don't know. I, I'm kind of curious um, to see what happens because I know musicians right now, it's good and bad because there's no massive uh, music company put, uh, you know, behind them now. Behind, you know, because before you had Capitol Records and all these things um, that would really push musicians. Now that's not around as much as it was. I don't know. I haven't looked into any of that shit back then. I mean, not, looked, no, not in many years have I really put effort into I'm, looking I'm, at that. I'm basing off some like older interviews when you talk to, uh, was it Steven Tyler was talking about their original record deal, and I've heard some oh, newer yeah. interviews you with... You mean by MGA and things like that? Yeah, those and companies? then you talk about you know, uh, uh, James Hetfield and his comment about modern... basically could have just been bought up, though. Um, because Steven Tyler said, you know, like the contracts originally, they, they got screwed out of a lot of money. I'm sure um, they did. And, you know, and then James Hetfield talking about the way it is now, the way uh, contracts are written, how the fact there's not as many record companies. Because the record companies, what they did is they were basically giant PR firms. They actually used to pay radio uh, DJs um, to play songs. Um, yeah. The best example of this in a movie is you watch Ray Charles, and I think... Oh, yeah. Um, it's in the f- some part, I think it's towards the middle. No, yeah, it's the beginning middle. Basic, it's a long movie. It is. I don't it's a remember, good movie. I don't it's remember the movie. song, but basically it's like the first song he sings, you, you see, it gets really popular. One of the record player guys drops an envelope of cash and the guy starts talking about it or vice versa. Um, but that used to happen in real life. Yeah. Um, un- unfortunately, without Ryan and his amazing ability to gab, we've kind of filled up <laughs> all we can talk about today. This Pretty is, much. There really wasn't a whole lot to talk about. This week was a lot of political stuff that I'm not particularly wanting to get into, uh, and that's not really what the show is for. It's really lost my interest, all the political stuff. It really has. I mean, it's, it's as John said earlier, um, it's basically watching wrestling. It's like watching the soap opera portion of wrestling over and over and over on every station. But I have to say, if somebody gave Nancy Pelosi or Donald Trump on Atomic Drop, I would totally watch the crap I would watch that. that, too. Actually, never. I want to see somebody give him a, an Outsider's Edge or Razor's Edge. That would be cool. <laughs> Diamond Cutter. Right? Oh, oh <laughs> let's do the, the Jake the Snake bit and drop Damien the Snake on him. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>